Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a rant. That's right everybody, this is gonna be a rant. You know, sometimes I do reviews for card tricks, sometimes I do reviews for decks of cards, but not always do I get to share with you my personal opinion. And you know, I was thinking about something the other day and it kind of just went, yeah, why is that like that? And so I wanna to talk to you today about blank cards. You know, there's a couple different types of blank cards you can get out there. They come to you in your deck as a gaff. They say, hey, you want a gaff? Here's a blank card. And you're like, wow, thank you? I guess. I mean, there's the blank card that's the double blank, right? And then there's the blank card that has the back design, but then on the face, it's a blank. And you're like, wow, this doesn't feel like a gaff. I mean, sometimes there's trick cards, those are cool. And there's double backers, and you're like, okay, I know what to do with a double backer. Double facers, I, I know what to do with a double facer. But what do you do with a blank? Like, is this a real gaff card? Or were you just lazy and just didn't want to put anything on the face? Just, oh, it's a blank card. I mean, some people will take this and they'll make it an advertisement card or a coming soon card or a preview for something else. But just to give me the back design with a blank face, like, why? What do I do with this? Well, some people, I don't know, what you do the magic trick where you have a person's card selected and then you're like, watch, I can take all the ink off of it. Now it's blank. But if I hand this out to somebody, they're gonna say, this is just a blank card. Like, where's my, where'd my card go? So I was thinking, all right, what are some ideas that you could do with a blank card and still be magical or still be fun. Well, I think, you know what? When you get a blank card like this, this is a perfect opportunity for a writing surface. Like, this is a blank piece of paper. It's a, a, a great place to write something down. You know, a lot of times we're forcing cards and then we're giving them pen and say, sign your name. And then they're, you know, they got a jack of diamonds and they're trying to find, okay, where's a good place where they can see my signature. But if you have a blank card, well, you can write your name wherever you want. And so the first thing that jumps to my mind is the ambitious card routine. The ambitious card routine doesn't need a card per se to do the trick. That's why we allow them to take any card they want. It doesn't matter which card they take. They can take any card they want. And then from there on, we utilize that card. Why not start your ambitious card routine with a blank card? Have them sign their name and draw a picture. Say, you know what? You get to make your own card because I want you to be dead center perfect positive that this is your card. So make your own card. Draw a happy face on it, a gesture, your favorite, you know, limerick or whatever. Write inspirational words of wisdom and sign your name to it. I want you to make this card as unique as possible. Then there's no way in the world there could be a duplicate of this. Every time they see this, it's going to be their card. Use a blank card for an ambitious card routine and not a regular playing card. All right, idea number two. Sometimes uh, we do tricks that involve jokers because we have two jokers and they're identical, but we don't necessarily need them for the trick. We need them as placeholders. You could say, I want you to take this joker and insert it into the deck, right? There's a routine where you have two spectators, okay? And you hand them the deck and they count down cards face down. And then each spectator places the joker where they stop counting and they place the remainder of the deck on top and then you give the same deck to the second spectator, they count down, Are you, you know this trick, and you stick the joker on, a, on, the selected, on their selection, they place the remainder of the deck and they hand it back to you, and then you spread the cards and you find their two jokers and the cards that correlate. Okay, what if instead of giving them jokers, you give them blank cards? And again, they sign their name. You say, this is Mark's card, this is Sally's card. I'm sure those aren't names of your real friends. But then once you fan the cards, then it's very easy to remember. Look, here's Mark's name. So it's not a joker, right? Like, I don't remember if that's Mark's joker. So you say, oh, look, Mark, there's your card. And you slide it out with the card he selected. And you say, oh, look, Sally, there's your card. And you slide it out with the card she selected. Then it becomes way more personal. And at the end of the trick, they get to keep their cards. You usually take your jokers back. You know, and I think that's the thing. With some of our cards, we take them back. And so the magic kind of leaves with us, but it's always great to leave your spectators with some little piece of reminder of that magical experience that they have. And so if you can take some of these blank cards that you've got lying around that you're not sure what to do with, start using these as your placeholders. Start using these as your jokers. Start using these as your cards that you want to control. Allow your spectators to draw on them, sign them, do anything they want. Use them for mentalism, number forces, anything like that. You know, use them up, okay? Let's stop, let's get them out of our drawers 
and start writing and scribbling all over them and handing them out to our spectators. And I guarantee you, you probably use this gaff a lot more and probably appreciate it a lot more. All right, so are there other ideas? Other ideas out there that you have for a blank card? I'd love to hear them. We'd love to dialogue. Let's get into a discussion. And I don't mean the standard tricks that you can do with a blank card. Something that you've thought of, okay? Something creative, something that you think, that would be a great idea. We'd love to carry on this conversation with you a little further. So comment below, let us know what's going on. You can also join the conversation on Facebook. You know, I got a, a social media on Facebook. You can link me there. You can like me over on Twitter. I'm over there too. And I'm on Instagram. Lots of places for you to jump in and get this going. And of course, you can check out all of our magic reviews and card reviews at magicorthodoxy.com.